Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Agito Live video. I'm just here to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and maybe consider leaving a comment on what you liked or disliked about the video. And I hope you enjoy the content. I'll see you later. Turn recording on. Cool. Where am I supposed to go? I'm supposed to go right here. Okay. Well. Here we go. Newsflash! Fedeconi's Charmony Festival has entered its countdown phase. Accompanied by Clocky's TikToks, okay. after 12 system hours, this grand celebration will commence with much fanfare. Okay. Alright, we're starting out with uh, Boot Hill pointing a gun at uh, Daniel. Sorry, Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. I love his voice so much. <laughs> For the last time, state your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill, and I'm a Galaxy Ranger. He's got shark teeth. Nice. A Galaxy Ranger? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off grid for too long. The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. I mean, he's a cowboy. You got, there's got to be there's got to be a hijack at some point. This is this is such this is such a fitting opening for this character, uh, for him to be trying to hijack the train. That's fucking hilarious. I love it. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What chatting with someone while holding a gun is considered a hijacking? Yes. Wait, I just realized. I just realized his earring is a bullet. <laughs> this character's too cool. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status, and none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. You know, it's been a while since I've actually we've actually heard Daniel's voice because he hasn't he wasn't he has not been a focus of this story like at all. Like there wasn't even like sidestep with him because he wasn't like important to this story. So it's hearing his voice again has been like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it's good, it's good. <laughs> This is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of fools spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. That sounds inappropriate. I love his stance. Of course. I know you won't believe me. Which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. Why do you have a hard time? Wait, what? <laughs> See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter. An eternal classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes, so... You all have to first prove yourselves, huh? Where are you going? <laughs> I love the confusion there. Like, wait, what was? I'm pointing a gun at you, man. Get back here. Hmm. Recognize this? <laughs> it's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys. Muddle Fusher. <laughs> I fucking love Boot Hill. I, I Muddle Fudger love Boo Boot Hill. <laughs> oh, I love Boot Hill. I love Boot Hill so much. This character is amazing. I, I have known him for like five minutes at most. 
Let me check my recording. Four, four minutes and 43 seconds at most, and I already love his character. Mm, model fudger? <laughs> I don't know why it sounded so much funnier coming out of Paw Bob's voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> I I I need that as a voice clip. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna make that my. I need to make that like a sound clip. Muddle fudger, <laughs> just from Pop Pop. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's so good. This is the jade abacus gifted to the express by the Senjo Lofu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Senjo Alliance's official recognition of the express. Is that enough? I do like how they brought that back up and they also brought it up in regards to the galaxy rangers who also follow the hunt and all this other stuff so i like it and across these sprawling stars a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of cloud knights now i reckon that'd be one budging sight to be <laughs> around <laughs> oh, the game is not allowing him to curse. Whether it's like part of his like personality, it's it's like part of his like programming or whatever. I think it's great. That's great. That's fantastic. I love it. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets, but I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is... Si he would say... <laughs> he said situations. Oh, man. They... Uh, okay, look. I cannot express how well they've done with his even his just general dialogue. <laughs> I love right, it. Then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right, then. Tell me, what kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? Oh, my friend, this question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own fated path along the hunt, with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. Hmm, this reply does not instill trust and only makes your predicament more... Precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. Hmm. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? I fucking love it. I, I can listen to him talk forever. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinnacone for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Oh, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. Son of a nice lady posing as one of us. 
she's on Pentecost. <gasps> I love it. I love that they found a way to like look. There's gonna, there would normally be a lot of cursing and things like that because he's a cowboy. Um, but so we're just gonna have him say like really silly. <laughs> it actually fits with what Adventuring was saying in the um, the live stream because I don't know if you guys remember in the live stream Adventuring said a couple of statements like this about him. That's pretty funny. Son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's a bunny right my now. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all mimetic organisms, appearing one moment and gone the next. Ugh. She scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron, and according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. Which is, which is insane. That's impossible. Exactly, that's literally impossible. That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. I guess Daniel hasn't been getting the reports from Pentaconia about how, yeah, no, she definitely, she definitely an emanator of nihility. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? You feel this in a line later on where it leaves you saying, what the fuck talks like this? Now, I, I mean, who talks like Boot Hill? A lot of people. A lot of like I, I cannot express I cannot express how well they have done with his voice. <laughs> um, I X I've never heard someone pronounce X as I X, but I guess that makes more sense because it is the the supposed to be the normal the Roman numeral, and he was a he technically was a computer I think at some point or whatever. So then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which for many people it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Oh, uh, an experiment number, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit, I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. That sounds, that sounds terrible. That sounds like a, just a bad time for, like a good time, but a bad time. You know what I'm saying? You know, different than that of those of clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent, eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. I got what you meant, Nazar. Okay. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. Facts. It's so fitting that an elation never spills the beans of being one because he's drunk. It does. You're absolutely right, Pharaoh. It does. It's it's great. I love it. <sighs> but Budil has a good point. The fact that they don't like they don't exist, uh, we're not nihilistic enough. Makes so, sense. I can see it. Do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe, this is when we call up. Oh, uh, we found the emanator of nihility. She's pretty cool. We're chilling. We're having drinks. Doing a little dance, making a little love, you know. We don't know what's happening. Gonna get down tonight. Escape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron, who knows what she intends to do. Interesting. Why is she posing as a Galaxy Ranger then? Or maybe she actually took the oaths. Who knows? I don't intend to do anything. Yep. I don't intend to do anything, and yet there is a massive cut of nihility, like literally cut into reality. That's not up to you. Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop 
to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Be it reality or dream, staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the golden hour was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, dyed with a mist of nihility. Yeah, that's like going to be a permanent cut. absolutely insane it's literally removed it it literally it's gone like it, it was sucked it was sucked into nihility it's gone a single slash of blade isn't really accurate it was actually two blades just that the second one was faster that's not the point someone's mad someone's mad <laughs> many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Panacone and the peace. Let's call it elite combat. That would make sense. I actually agree. That would make sense. It's 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 the if nihility is the end of everything, it's like everything's gonna end, it doesn't matter, like it's all just whatever, right? Then the power of it would be to basically make something end. It's over. Right? And judging by the trailers with Akron, right? Her sword, the end, like all that other stuff. Like, it's over. It's gone. The planet of festivities has no place for you. A puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to dread the illuminated stage. Damn. Whatever this is, whether it's harmony itself, big like you gotta go, you gotta, you just gotta, we can't have you here. You've gotta go. <laughs> Sorry, your 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 invitation's been revoked. You need to leave now. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Penacone's dream master. <laughs> That's just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is the real me. I hope not, because that dude's hair sucks. That's a if that's the real you, buddy, you need to go see your barber again, because that guy's got a hair problem. We Is this the unity that the family espouses? Man, her memory told her she still has some color as X Power hasn't deleted who and what she is, yeah. My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths. Spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. Which is why the others are of all X are its puppets in the background. Well, that's what I was saying. Well, that goes back to my conversation I had, I think, when I was originally watching. Um, when I originally did the quest, was like, there's a reason she is the only emanator that we know of. And, like... I understand there are self annihilators, but she is the only emanator, right? Because she still has her personality. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. In fact, she wants to destroy Nihility. I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas, I am not asking. If you think you can. Ooh. Ooh. If you think you can. Oh shit. 
Oh shit, Akron. Akron be like, what you gonna do? What you gonna do about it, punk? <laughs> hands put him up. <laughs> she saw her god and was like, hands put him up. I want problems. Are you threatening me? Hmm. I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Damn. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, Why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. I kind of like this. I kind of like the more uh, aggressive, a little bit more uh, like, bitch, please, Acheron, than the more than the subdued version of Acheron. You are confident, but be reminded the family is forgiving, but not weak. The cords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply. When the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath in all of your lifetime. Isn't eternal centurion another name for the harmony or like group of harmony? I think along those lines. It's like this is building up the story in which we are eventually becoming an internet or discover that we are the true path of destruction now. And as I don't think the whole Nanook thing at the beginning was a throwaway scene. I mean, here's the thing. Nanook, we, Nanook threw their gaze upon us. Um, Kapoth threw their gaze upon us. I haven't got to the part, but I'm pretty sure Harmony, um, Zeep, Zeep A is going to uh, throw their gaze upon us. I think there's more to it than simply like Path, Aeon, and being an Emanator. I think there's a little bit more to it. Like the fact that we have a Stellaron inside us, which is the destruction thing, is like a little bit different, obviously, but... There is something to be said about that. I didn't because if I remember correctly, our who we are, we're a we were created. Like we we're like a homunculus. We were not a person beforehand. According to uh the Kafka story stuff. So So we'll see what happens. One hundred and thirty seven individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them yeah, were I know. those who once severed my wings. That's what I'm saying. Kafka trained us and also their stuff. We were created, though. Yes, I know we existed before the space station. Literally, I just... Okay, I don't want to go over all the background lore because I'm trying to focus on the story, so we're going to move on. <laughs> I don't want to stop and explain things that you should already know and that I already know because I'm just trying to do the story right now that's in front of me. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I just wonder how many patients I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once served my seven wings and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. Damn. <sighs> But that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Pentacle are of different worlds. Those born on a far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. 
Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. This line was read so well. That is such. That is. This whole line was such a good fucking line. Like, just like this is a great. That was a great read. That was just that's, that. That sounds terrifying. I'm gonna point that out. The Dream Master describing Acheron in this way is like, look, you are so like no, no harmony, but no. Damn. Acheron, a befitting name. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Okay, this is actually interesting. So this is also interesting because this this little dialogue bit here from her says kind of finally puts into um, perspective exactly why uh, uh, why she is the way she outside of like the story we know about her world, everything falling apart and blah blah blah, and like all the Honkai stuff, right? Outside of all that, this actually kind of puts into perspective a little bit of why she is attached to the Nihility and why she is an emanator, why she's like a self annihilator, is because she does actually believe in Nihility. Like this line right here says so much about her as a character in the context that like she doesn't want to, right? We've, we've heard about her character, like she doesn't want to, she wants to destroy Nihility. However, the problem is she believes, she genuinely believes that it will still all end in Ix's shadow, right? You can take a lot from, from this. That's what I'm taking from it anyways. Because she, she believes in the inevitability of Nihility because it's all inevitable. Yeah, she doesn't want everything to end terribly but she believes that it all it all eventually will and realistically i mean all things come to an end as they say so uh, in terms of how x kind of doesn't give a fuck about it, but yeah they all sound terrified of its power and abilities and it's basically spawn yeah it's true well because i think the re uh, that's the difference between nihility and destruction as an example right nihility everything will come to an end anyways so why bother right which is why x doesn't do anything because Everything will eventually come to Ix. It doesn't matter. Ix does not have to do anything. That's why when Ix does do something or something does have like Ix's gaze or Ix's power, like in the situation of Acheron, right? It's fucking terrifying because it's it's like waking a sleeping giant, right? It's it's poking the tiger, right? You just you don't know what the fuck it's gonna do. And the unknown, the unknown end is so much more terrifying than simple wanton destruction like humanity will tell you humanity's history will tell you the unknown is what terrifies us the most it intrigues us the most but it's also what terrifies us the most and that's why x is a problem in the context that he's not a problem or they're not a problem whereas um destruction is right now like it's right like it's not in the future everything is going it's right now it is literally coming to your doorstep to destroy everything so that's why Nanook is a bigger problem than Ix. Switching to Robin's POB? Okay, at the same time, Golden Hour. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios theme park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area, and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them. But it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Hmm? Yeah, what about it? it... Oh, Miss Robin, am I seeing things right? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful Sparkle. journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. 
Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones? They fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... Shh. This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival, but it seems it's been leaked. Can you help me keep the secret? The raining chips were supposed to be part of my act. Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you. That's appreciated. Yeah, it's fucking Sparkle. I'd like to give you a token. Sparkle's gift. planning something, and I don't like it. This button is... Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. There could be an unexpected treat in store for you. All right. It looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please, enjoy the dreamscape. So many people talking about it. This commotion at the theme park definitely made waves. Yeah, Robin. Yeah, the full fools always ring twice. Yeah, it's like this is not Robin. This is a way for us to test out Robin, which is clever. It also makes me wonder if the Robin we get in the game is actually just Sparkle. What if she is actually dead? Oh my god, it's actually Sparkle the whole time. Oh, that would be something. Also, this team is not not designed for a Robin. A Robin team, so let's let's reset this. Let's set this up. Quick lineup. Okay. You know what? Let's bring me into the team. We'll bring Robin. Me, Akron, Robin, and Spark. Sure. There. Everybody who's on the scene is on the scene now. <laughs> so to speak. Can't. Unfortunate. They would protect the guests within the dreamscape, but I witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park. And soon after, a rip tore through the sky, and black rain started leaking out of the void. So there was a there was something in the trailer that in one of the trailers that apparently the commercial was Sparkle playing Robin for the commercial, which means Sunday did take her up on the offer to play Robin. Hmm. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. And it's true that an uninvited guest has unexpectedly hmm. entered the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation, but it won't resolve the problem. The family can try their best to protect their reputation, but as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. Perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised, but there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule. I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Hmm. I could stay here, 
But keep in mind, guests come to Pinnacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Of course. With the Charmony Festival about to commence, we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family Something has be so arranged mad. this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. Disperse gifts to comfort the people. This guy just doesn't seem uncomfortable. To drink. Are you sure you're okay? It doesn't matter how much you drink in a dream. This dude's like shivering. Other dude's kind of leaning on him. <laughs> Oof. Hello. May I ask what happened here? Nothing to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I've just been. How do you know? No, I call bullshit. I call. I call. So much bullshit on that. How do you not recognize Robin? This is an anime game, okay? Everybody's in the same outfit every time you see them, no matter where they are in existence, okay? Outfits never change, which means character appearances never change, okay? Nobody else in the entire galaxy will look like Robin. How do you not recognize Robin? Absolutely unbelievable. Rookie or not, you need to fire her. She is dumb. She is terrible at her job. She has failed. Hey, don't sweat it. You Tough job? Nah. job? Nah. Nah. You're not cut out for this job. How's you don't even recognize looking? you don't even recognize your own boss. Slash slash the most famous person in all of Pentagoni. Oh, nah. We've sealed off the theme park. Nah. Most guests are used to bizarre Imposter. in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Mm. <laughs> Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I trust you guys. But regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Right back. Is it true that the right, IPC's right ambassadors came with ill intent? And that Galaxy Ranger who easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, to tell you the truth, everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Pentacony have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. Representative from the IPC, he's trying to regain ownership of Pentacony and is prepared for a hostile takeover. Of course, the family did not agree. The result of the failed negotiations is as you see it now. I wonder. So, this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? No. Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and I'll have something to show for it soon. However, given the situation, the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. I am gonna bet Please on the IPC be in this scenario. Miss Robin, we take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. This is a small gift prepared by the Iris family for the guests. There's one for you too. Please, open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. 
I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait. Yes, I agree, Ezra. It's terrible. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. Rest assured, the Dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. I gotta say that the TV guys are Robin's worst nightmare with her 160 energy requirement getting slapped with their minus energy attack is just like, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. It's terrible. <laughs> so rough. Very rough. Okay, this is going on too long. I don't need another person. Miss Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! I didn't expect to meet a fan here. I'm honored. Welcome to False Tampa, modesty is terrible. A world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin. Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Preparation is important. But the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, it's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? Everyone, please do not panic. Every there's one person. I believe that the family you, will give everyone. Everyone, there's one person. There's literally time. one dude. One dude standing Even in front if of you. you. Say so, Miss Robin. It's hard to believe. <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? It's never ending. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. Miss Robin? Don't let the mask fall. Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Maybe maybe it's not. Maybe it is Robin. Maybe uh, Robin is like this. Huh? What was I just doing? And uh, who might you be, miss? Here, yep. take this, little guest. Yep. No, it this is perfect. Okay. has been specially prepared <laughs> for you by the family. Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around you. By the way, real quick, just to the side, you could actually see her mouth, like her jaw Something moving as she was talking on the other side, which means they still animated like the mouth movements, even though she wasn't facing the camera. It's a small detail, but it's pretty good. We're back to where it all began. Yep. You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Penicone. Land of the Exiles. It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter, Sam. I'm fine. Sorry, I hope I haven't scared you. Pfft, nah, I, I wasn't worried. Questions. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme? In that instant before it killed me? I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So... Following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using more direct means. And then invite you to join. However, contrary to my wishes, 
I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria, my asthma, it exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath okay. the dreamscape of Penacone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. And so, uh, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet I, 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 I could not reveal my own identity. So, I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. I guess that kind of makes sense, okay. All my attempts proved futile. It wasn't until not long ago when a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream, causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape, that I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. And, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. I completely understand. I'm completely... I'm going to be honest. I am still kind of confused. <laughs> No, it's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say, you are very close to the final answer. Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Now, let's leave this place. Please close your eyes. Take a deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. And remember, you must not open your eyes at all times. Not, 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 not. Three, two, one. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. Screens rage a thick inverted surge of memory, crashing into your chest, churning and ravaging. Your consciousness becomes like scraps of paper caught in a whirlpool, breaking apart, dissolving, and dispersing with the turbulent, mu muddy current. Wow, we just summoned the death meme and it stabbed us. Cool. Innumerable voices resonate through the symphony of memoria like roaring thunder, and among them, one echo stood out with exceptional clarity. You knew it came from the girl beside you, your hearts beating to the same rhythm, peaceful and even more peaceful. So in that quiet darkness, memories ripple into existence. I never knew you could do this. Oh, it's Blade. Blade in a suit. Yo. Screenshot. Do you have a driver's license? <laughs> I do. Hey. That is... Surprising. That is surprising, I'm not gonna lie. Why? Because this is Chapella, the city of sins. God, hearing Blade's voice again is so good. He's, he's got such a good voice. No, it's nothing. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. There's still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. It's interesting. A guy... We have a guy who cannot die. And we have a girl who is like slowly being eroded away <laughs> and yet he's also technically eroding away because he lives too long and that's how um um the 
whole uh, the whole uh, abundance. What call it? I forgot what it's called again. Um, Mara struck effect is. Yeah, his mind is going poop. Yep. Such a long tunnel. <laughs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Japella Brotherhood. Ah, oh, the mem the mem okay. Is that also part of the script? It's in your script, too. Sorry. I didn't notice. <laughs> Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. Interesting. So she works for the Stalron Hunters, but she clearly was like, Eh, I can't always go to the script. Fuck, it went to the script. It can't always... Oh, I went to the script. She's basically the one who proves... Proves... Proves Elio's scripts, more, more or less. I told you before. It's a bad habit. What about you, then? Is this the moment you finally find the death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Interesting. This is such an interesting conversation. I like this. Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep-deprived driver. <laughs> I just want to get there in one piece. <laughs> Welcome back, Ken. That's, that's, that's so fucking love to see. It's so good. <laughs> this car has full self driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? I do. I also find it funny that he has a driver's license. <laughs> this whole scene is just amazing. <laughs> hey, don't take everything so seriously. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future, and we, likewise, are aware of our predetermined end. But before that moment arrives, we can still choose what we do. We all have this right, don't we? After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history. And the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Hanakoni. I hope you find whatever you seek there be it answers or salvation. If they ever do skins for this game, I want the Stellaron Hunters in their suits. Okay, I'm just gonna put that out there right now. Yeah, glad to see you're safe and sound. Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't yeah, it incredible? even so, Wolf, yes. The monster that we have always known as Death is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. It abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. The question that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in the dreamscape, appears to be a cognitive trap. It was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Every emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker. Since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. I have no clue, Ken. I don't think I've ever read patch notes for from the any of the of Hollyoverse games. I've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. 
Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. Oh, and thank, thank God it's Welp that we met here and not fucking March 7th. Oh. Replace her with Firefly already, please. The real dreamscape. The land of the exiles. Before we go, should we speak to everyone first? As the protagonist of your own story, it's up to you to overcome and forge ahead. I am really sorry for waiting until now to tell you everything. Two reasons. Firstly, the script. In the future, that I'll let that aside. Uh, not Sam. And take it personally. It's all Thank good. Thank you. Elio only gave me one instruction: allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. It probably on the. the um, by the way, Ken, to answer your question a little more. Probably on the Hoyo Hoyo Lab website, there'll probably be an area somewhere on there that has the patch notes, if not in the game directly. Elio's scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. But with your appearance, this condition has apparently ceased to be appropriate. Perhaps he also saw the impossible in the future. Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? Well, that's Sam. It belongs to the Iron yeah. Cavalry of Glamoth's Firmament Frontline. A Firefly Type 4 Tactical Heavy Assault Mech. It is the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was... How I should have looked to the rest of the world. Interesting. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality, so we mustn't lower our guard. Something on your mind? Let's talk about it. No wonder Miss Acheron is so averse to drawing her blade. It's hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath. If it weren't for the fact that Aventurine's power originated from the preservation, the entire dreamscape would have been affected. Don't feel burdened by this. Even without that Stellaron inside you, Aventurine would still have found other methods to accomplish his goal. Let's just believe in Miss Acheron, and given her prowess, I don't think we've got anything to worry about. True. During your investigation, he shared a vital piece of information. Mikhail, the former watchmaker who... But this is precisely where the problem lies. You were clearly investigating... And now, with Firefly mentioning his name again... Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. I wasn't even the first one who shared the information with? Oh. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? For her, this is a secret, but she didn't reveal all her secrets. I just can't shake the feeling that her situation... I hope you've regained a little composure. Yeah, composure is not the word I'd be looking for. Well, this is a new area. Oh, snap. Give me that, Jade. 
I like this area though. I like visually. I like this a lot. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Keep going straight down this alley, Same. and it'll lead to an elevator. It'll take us to the center of the land of the exiles. Damn. <laughs> Dude literally living in the dumpster. Okay. Average New Yorker. <laughs> Watchmaker also left his mark on Dreamflux Reef. It's following me with its eyes. I'm going to switch him to uh, to this for now, though. While we're doing that. Um, do I have another copy that I can throw into that? No, I do not. Okay. That's fine. I don't want to move pellets off her, so I'll just go with the not as good one for a moment. Now this, this really reminds me of Rapture. And all beyond the family's reach. Many parties I've never played Bash, like I just seen a lot. Okay. Wow. The atmosphere in this fortress is pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the Twelve Dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Though both Dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. I want this jacket. I want the male trailblazer's jacket. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the trade district. There are more people there. And... Perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. Sure. Let's reconnect later. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there's someone I need to talk hey, to. Hey, Misha. Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful... Misha is the monster! We'd better check, just to be sure. Trash 
can is perfect for me. And perfectly legal for me to stay in. Introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh. And who might this be? Of course, Welt can see Clocky. Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! Your uh, memory zone meme? <laughs> nope. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. So this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people. I swear back to God, if that's the death thing, I'm gonna laugh my ass off. This Sleepy, can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes, but it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here. Okay, well, my 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 family. thought of it being Sunday and all that stuff goes out the window now, I guess. Death, not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt. Wow, <laughs> my bad. I stabbed the wrong person. My bad. My bad. I was a little tired. I. I saw, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't quite see right with my, my 50 million eyes, and so I kind of just, you know, stabbed the wrong person. My bad. Don't worry about it. I see. Has it brought back any guests recently? Say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for, is it Miss Robin? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Um, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream. But its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find no. your companions. And then we can <laughs> no, all go visit Miss Robin together. Get to the... <laughs> She's I don't want to walk around the town to talking to people I don't fucking care she about. She won't be leaving anytime soon, so there should be enough time. All right then, we'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penaconi. As for the intentions of this the smells like one Kino, big aha joke. We are still none the wiser. Yes, that's my thinking as well. I'm not entirely certain. I mean, say, uh, you mentioned before that you saw a clocky that only you could see, right? I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Forget it. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. 
Yeah, it does seem a little weird. I mean, it, it's it's like, oh, it's Welt. Of course he can see the little animated clock dude. He loves animations and things along those lines. He is a kid at heart. Cool, whatever. But he does bring up a good point. That maybe there's something more to it. Could definitely be something more to it. Oh, I love this. Oh, you can see. Oh, you can see Penna County. Like the land, of, like the rest of it. The land of Dre is literally. A, that's kind of cool. What the fuck is that? It's Ix. Oh no, Ix is here. Everybody, run! He's right there. He's he's gonna swallow it. Why are you all standing here so calmly? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hello, Rav. Everyone, look! From here, you can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in memoria dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Okay, she's just, you're just singing Robin, you're just, you're just, okay, I mean, it's still good, but, come on, it's karaoke night, sit, I can sit. System hours, the above dream will swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This place will cease to exist as the dream devours everything. Hmm? Who are you all, and why haven't you left yet? This place is about to disappear. I'm Kami, a dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics, and this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago, but now it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is, according to my calculations, the flow rate of memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost, almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. After ten system hours, the Dreamflux Reef will cease to exist. Just like the melting of glaciers, everything will crumble and disintegrate. The dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Kami isn't a bad person. She's just a bit lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. <laughs> you don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina. I'm not. Why, of course. She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics. And regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature. I came to Penacone to learn more about my idol, and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef. 
all because this is her final wreck. I felt it. The source is in the golden hour. There is a certain anomalous presence. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? Well, the nameless message by the conductor? Oh, yeah. That's right. It seems like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef before uh, abruptly passing away. Miss Katie regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. Perhaps. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the others there. Oh, actually, I need to go down that way. Man, I can't even escape it, and I don't Let even have her. Go. Didn't even say he the thinks joke. he's dead. Although, when I... Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat. You, you're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have been... Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of Uh, you're not talking- <gasps> Don't say that name! Oh shit, random fight, okay. Let's play for a while. You almost fit me? Free will, or was it fate? Let's play. Can you find the answer? Can restart the challenge here. Oh, they have the restart. They, the thing, the restart has been put here. That's awesome. Um, down by one. I'll turn, I'll turn voices up a little bit. But I'll go down by one over there. Still waters of oblivion. Yeah, time for some hardship. Yep. That. Did that hurt? Uh -uh. Another journey destined for oblivion. Cool. He passed out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. I see. Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him... We can ask Jesse for help! I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. I remember when this place... Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. I knew you couldn't hold your liquor. I tried to warn you, too. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? Uh, these two are my friends. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom in Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often Asdana. happen here? Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. I guess Donna. it's one of the signs Donna. of the Wait, sweet isn't that dreams isn't that from Aventurine's planet? What? This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady, March? Her songs can heal mental wounds. A Halovian lady? It's Avgen, yeah. 
I was down his pinnacle system. Oh, okay. That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Uh huh? Robin? But I thought she. Uh... Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that. We met some stowaways in the residential. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana, okay. like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was. If that's true. It's no wonder there are so many. Himeko must be gathering in for me. I'm sorry. Any scene where March is talking, I am going to be clicking through it a lot faster because I do not want to listen to her voice. It is it is grating on my ears. This is where we split up. She can't. So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. <laughs> <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. Who's this guy? Himeko, Mika. here they are. Ah, oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacone. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, the Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. Looks like he skips leg day. I don't think so. I don't think he skips leg day at all. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh... Were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? <gasps> On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when What's we going on? There's something weird going on with Welt here. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. An important no, guest? Ken, I don't want an answer. Who could it be? Why would I want an answer? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. Well, it's like, there are no such thing as stupid questions. That was a stupid question. Do you want an answer? No, I'm playing a game. I'm going through the story right now. Why would I want the answer to the story? Why would I play through the story if I if I just wanted the answer? Stupid fucking question. There she is. There really is her, Miss Robin. <laughs> Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style. I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their life. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef. Talked to everyone I met. And they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there with her blind eyes used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary... He's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. 
Interesting. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can How fly are they getting free. in here then? I'm Even so confused. There's so many little things free, about this that don't just like don't relying compute. on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. That's cool. We're living I'm in the matrix. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. Sure enough. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams. Because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you All this down, squishy, rainbowy, hippy dippy dialogue is really killing me right now. <laughs> it's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here. Can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of Memorian as Donna. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. I'm losing my voice. It's just one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. The sweet dreams collapse? While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the 12 dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. So she got stabbed on purpose. She literally did what we did and called it to her to get stabbed. The Land of the Exiles. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream. Fucking insult from now. past is buried. Boah. I'm waiting for the boah. We need a boah. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable, but the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... Or traitors abandoned their original principles and using the name of harmony exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream interesting this is not the strong defending the weak but rather the strong exploiting the weak a world without equality won't ever be favored by the harmony and naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external intervention. Yeah, this kind of does scream a little bit of destruction, Perhaps but I have a feeling this is not destruction related. 
regardless, I cannot accept my home as moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. Rise up, da -da -da. <laughs> Wait, really? Oh, I thought for a second. She's not really about to sing. Stage again. Oh my god, she's quitting being a singer. Tell Charlie Russell. Look here, brother. A little bird. Uh. <laughs> Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So, how, how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. Uh, but where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do. But I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered. I can't sing. It didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds. They should be flying free in the sky. That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. By the way, it's his kind voice. This voice does not sound kind. Sounds sus. It's like, I'm sorry. I hear this voice and I'm looking at the scene and I'm thinking about, okay, they're really young. They're kind of being indoctrinated into the harmony. I'm talking about this voice sounds super sus. I'm like, nah, this is not good. As you probably know, charmony doves can fly through the air when they fly really high. The friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. Like it sounds like, hey kids, I have candy voice. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is not a good, this is not a kind voice. <laughs> the way he says scholar sounds like scum. Yeah, no, like he, he is not, this is not, this is like the Uncle Bad Touch voice. That we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. He's way too excited about this. Their ancestors like, it. were too weak to survive. I like the voice though. It, like, so like at the same time I say all that, it's a, it's it's good. They started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. It's, it's obviously bad service for female players that like the red flags. Ooh, that's, that's terrible. Oh, but then again, considering how into Kafka I am and everything along those lines, <laughs> red flags are a, are, a, are a bonus, I guess. So, you mean, birds aren't born to fly, but they fly 
find a way to do it through their determination? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because... They've never seen those birds crashing to their death. Damn! Sunday was definitely a kid who thought way too much. Scholar is the proper word for him. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because I... I want it to live. No matter what. Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. And what might that be? My son. Okay, now seriously, we're definitely getting those bad touch priest vibes now. <laughs> what if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky? Only to see them crash to the ground and die? That's depressing. <laughs> That's so depressing. <laughs> Oh, that's such a depressing thought, but it's true. What's the phrase? It's better to have to have loved than to have never like to have, like have loved than never loved at all, or something along those lines. That's kind of like to, it's better to have tried than not have tried at all, or something along those lines. Talking in your sleep, birdie. Don't know till you try, that kind of thing. Time to wake up. <sighs> this ended up being a lot less nefarious than I was expecting. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands, lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacony. No. Any of that catch your interest? I don't think so. I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is the sense of justice inside of you. Read in addition. Interesting. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Moments later. Again, way too many cooks in the kitchen. Here we go. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us, Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on this small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, 
Today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Pentagoni faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lantmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Though I had expected as much, the tales... True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. I brought Gallagher here. It's still Truth. Huh. The atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people. Well, I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher. Brother. There's no need for words. You're safe. And that's all that matters. I think a lot of words are needed, buddy. Brother. There's no need for words. I think a lot of words are needed there, buddy. I don't know about all that. I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? Sure, whatever. I'm so confused now. So why I'm confused now is like, they have this big murder mystery going on, and then have undercut the murder mystery by being like, actually, it was a teleportation thing all to this underground city where the trailblazers used to be, and it's actually not that big a deal. Don't worry about it. We have a bigger problem that we're not going to explain just yet. We're going to explain it now. I don't know. It's weird. Very weird. Sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble, like they the basically just introduced a bunch of new elements, and I'm like, and okay, I still don't know Avengers. what's going on. I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, is it that obvious? Yes. Well, Get to it already. Your <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation. Okay. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle mm -hmm. for the legacy. Inviting different factions and stirring up a ruckus yeah. all over. Who's Pentagon. the traitor in the family in well, all this? It all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. Wait, there is a Stellaron? God damn it. Stellaron. But how is that possible? Penaconi is a free flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So care to take a guess at what that means? I wish that were the truth, but if that were the case, I wouldn't have invited all of you. 
The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like it, filling that... The dream ocean. is the Stellaron. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way... Yeah, it's li the literal. Oh wow, the entire dream, everything is literally a Stellaron. Okay, that's that's so bad. That actually is terrible. So this statement right here, I like this statement. I'm gonna screenshot this too. This statement right here, without an emanator of the remembrance or an enigmata. Like to create, like basically to create this, I was kind of, I was always curious how the dream was created. And funnily enough, I never really asked that question very much. Um, I figured it was just technology, but the idea that, I don't know you, Thinny, I just got to think theories on the sea, creating the land of the trees, like fitting that well, ocean to earth, make an island. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. To be able to... Uh, it, it, okay, yeah. You would need... Because the Stellaron is... Okay, that's... Uh, okay, that makes so much sense. But also, that's a problem. That's, that's such a not problem. something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. Because, like, we've seen what Stellarons do. They they could they change entire environs and do all kinds of other crazy shit and all this other stuff. And cause problems on a you know galactic level because well their destruction so this is interesting in Asdana, the planet of festivities itself is a stellar on disaster yep the, the yep the entire dream is a stellar on that's nuts that's actually crazy i love it that's a good twist i like it i like it uh the planet of festivities itself is a stellar on disaster it all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacony from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Asdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone of against course. the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. This is during the War of the Swarm, one of the last messages of the Swarm. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacony under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe. Spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. This is awesome. This is such an interesting way to use a Celeron. So Celerons are always like a MacGuffin, right? They're the thing that can do the thing that you need it to do, right? Um, and this is a this is such a different way they've used a Celeron because so far Celerons have been just like well been mostly just like 
explosively destructive or world environmentally changing and destructive. This is insidious, right? This is a totally different kind of destruction. I love it. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. And Enigmata is the other is the other the other Aeon that like created all this like creates things like putting them together and all that stuff. I remember correctly, Dormancy. which is what he is. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster, and... I'm still a little confused on a little piece and pieces, but it, it, I'm starting to see the threads. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with it. Oh yeah, we've definitely taken that Stellaron. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure Mr. he Wings. holds all the answers. Man, they sure do have a lot of derogatory names for uh, Sunday. Poor guy. Chicken Wing Boy, Mr. Wings. Unfortunate. As I suspected, the core of this issue lies within. It's always the fucking stellar. It's always destruction. Every time, Nanook. God damn it, it's always you. I don't know why I'm zooming in on my main character for that, but he's got the coloring, so there you go. We're Nanook's son. Or daughter, depending on your main character. Oh. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Penacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current. Ah, oh, you could hear master. his voice in there talk. Ah, oh, okay, yep. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your yes, own he had investigation been. Okay, so Sunday wasn't the bad guy. That's fine. Mr. Correct. Priestess. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you. Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive. And even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience. Explains why uh, he was like, I cannot have Nihility here. But that means the Dream Master, much like with Kokolia, and uh, not really uh, Fantilia, because Fantilia is a being of destruction, so she wasn't seduced by it. She was just like, no, I'm here to destroy shit. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans. And were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopherwood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacone. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopherwood become an enemy of the Harmony. Oh, so she would sing from the Charmony Festival, which would bring more people in, which would feed the Stellaron, which kind of fucked with the Harmony. Okay. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself, or the paradise in our dreams. Indeed, for the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Penacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. 
And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival. That's right. On Sunday's a character we're gonna get sure too. I want to Sunday. <laughs> pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. No reason to stop now. There's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back. You know, they fear no more, we'd win. Heroes never back down. Peace was never an option. I actually like that. Coming up against the reaver, no, I'd surrender. I like that. Heroes never back down. Peace was never exactly. an option. It's time for the crew to save the world once more. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if Things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. I'm still kind of curious what's going on with the whole clocky Yang thing, but I don't seem to be addressing it just yet, so let's see. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh-huh. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Penacony, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. So he's an emanator of Harmony? Because the entire power of the harmony behind him would imply emanator. Without them saying Maybe it. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? Wait, why? Isn't Yang, isn't Yang the strongest person in our group? Why would we want him to stay behind? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Wait, could I still be right? Oh, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. Ooh. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Rentrain's token. I took him to the International Peace Corporate. You remember the envoy played a little trick with it. Yes. Huh. I knew it. As I suspected, this chip Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. Son of a bitch. If I'm right, or, son of a nice lady. Track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. Aventurine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. Facts. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity. Because yep. then the IPC will be like, oh, you're, you, you are using a Stellaron. Preservation comes down. Preservation rings. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening. Especially nope. senior strategic investment department heads like him. SIDS. S -I -D. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to see... Why are they cutting on. him out of the story like this? This is interesting. I don't want March here. Spoken like a true hero. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, 
So the only one left is Legwork, if I'm not mistaken. We've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. It After is? All, I have no I've idea. I've at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express. And I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, I don't know why, but like you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. You're, you two are also here. <laughs> Why did it give me both of these stupid ass answers? Even the Galactic Baseball or Supremacy. What? Uh, hey, you can't just make up titles like that. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express. Which yeah, so Gallagher's every using the body the of the guy and it's like all a combination of all the other things. Okay. As for the last nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy, something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now, is the time to reveal it. Follow Gallagher and meet the Watchmaker. Uh, back here again. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. I've kept my promise, brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train. But I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. Uh, what's happening? Cutscene. Okay. resting place lies in the garden up ahead. The first and last nameless of Penacony. Mikhail Char Legworth, the watchmaker. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Definitely gonna have to farm me a watchmaker set. Oh. I see you in the zone of the garden closest to the full moon in the water. An elderly man rests on a recliner and both men are silence. Watchmaker Mikhail to our legwork has passed into that endless timeless dream where no sound could ever waken him. Sure enough. The watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that ah, one. Ah, I see the aha spoilers. There's the hat. <laughs> well, that's interesting. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes. Even more mysterious than me. Well, let's have a look. 
the words cease, semicolon, nods, ever since all your direction, you take a deep breath, steady your mind, and turn your gaze towards the watchmaker. Touch the dirty bubble in Mikhail's hand. Press hard against uh, your hand. You press your hands against the dream bubble, and the thick, viscous memoria converges under strain. Then it stretches downward from your fingertips as if weaving a delicate web, it gently cradles your palm. A chill travels from your fingertips, carrying with it a myriad of vibrant and intertwined memories as experience would suggest, but this time you see nothing at all. The dream bubble is clearly extraordinary. Perhaps the approach, the approach was wrong, you think. Holding your breath and closing your eyes with one knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin uncoated memoria. Yet before you, there remains an abyss of darkness. No crimson sun descending upon snow-capped mountains, no gentle laughter, no twinkling stars, no echoes of swords clashing in muscle, no traces of trail plains. There's nothing and nothing is there. Indubitably, this is but an empty dream bubble. Wait, what's going on? Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside. Hmm. How could a dream bubble be empty? <laughs> Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. Huh? I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? By the way, her voice is back to normal. There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. It's for Mikhail. And for the future of Penacony. Stab. Switching to Boot Hill POV. Okay, Welcome damn. Welcome to the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? Greetings. We're the name. We're constantly the getting Express. like side quests and with Daniel. We'd like to check in. The Astral Express. But I thought. Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. So what? Shut the fuck up. Let me through. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? Uh, I'm... Pom Pom. <laughs> a new nameless who's also with the Astral Express. I... If... Okay, so... I thought briefly that, man, I hope this quest doesn't make me want to pull for Robin because I really want to pull for Boot Hill. Every time I think that, Boot Hill ends up opening his mouth and I'm like, nope, Boot Hill is still who I'm going to pull for 100% of the time. There's no way I'm going not getting this character. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the express. So he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> is it possible to accommodate him as well oh i see another one of the nameless had a similar situation seems like a lot of people are joining the trailblaze these days since there's a precedent it shouldn't be a problem just give me a second to contact your companions i'm sorry dear guests but it seems i'm unable to reach the Did other members just of the like the Express. busy phone number dial what do you mean by unable to reach them my apologies this is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, 
The system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number, and we'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... Welt? I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding forced awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. Fair enough. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution, then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? <laughs> Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. <sighs> it seems so. Oh, fudge! Look, nothing personal, but if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Uh, please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head... <laughs> I can't reach him either! <laughs> this poor lady, this poor lady in her life is... <laughs> I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. <sighs> Just don't keep me waiting forever. <sighs> Don Hung seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Do I actually get to fight something? I won't help anything. Food Hill. He'll be switched. Hell yes. Hell yes. Okay, what team would I run with this? He's so cool. Okay. I hope I get to fight something with this. So I gotta make a proper team. On my boot hill. Sparkle? And then... Probably Fushuan. That'll give me more crit. Crit damage. Yeah. Oh, he's fucking cool. Ooh! Look at those sound effects! The bullet! Oh, you can just con. We'll be. They won't do it, but it would have been kind of cool if he, after six shots he actually has to reload. Does he move? He doesn't move either. Dude, look at the detailing on his pants. This guy's so fucking cool. Hell yeah. Hell. Why is it detecting life forms inside the luggage? Can I just stay here forever? I just wanna You're dead. Just kill around <laughs> straight up. Ask around why for imprisonment. I'm waiting for Dan. Huh? Please let me fight something, please. I want to know. The Charmony Festival is about to start. I'm so excited. Hey, you guys here for the Charmony Festival too? Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about, but I heard it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well. Back in my home world, Anaria, no, really. we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. If you say so, lady. Oh, come on. The Charmony Festival is a once in an amber era event. How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world. Birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Anyway, let's forget about that. 
Have you heard about the uh, unsettling things happening in the <laughs> dreamscape? I'm not. I'm not lying. I literally what just want to like listen to his voice lines, all of his voice lines. What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival. I've been looking forward to it. Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Gossip and rumors. If anything does happen, <laughs> the family will be on top of it. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. They're clueless. Fudging. Damn fudgers. That's great. That's so good. That's just a satisfying sound. Wait, what is his, uh... Locked and loaded. 3 9... okay. Locked and loaded. 3 9 X mile. What is that a reference to? I feel like it's a reference to something I just don't get it, but I should probably. Face oh, I can't. I can't. It's story. Let me click him. Greetings. I'm Cody of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? I like her hair. Hello. So, uh, uh there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. I like how he comes up to these people asking them questions, kind of giving that this the in personality and the way he speaks in these moments like he like he's kind of an innocent, he doesn't really know, he's just a curious bystander, yet he's literally walking around as a cowboy cyborg. Nobody Do believes you that, buddy. I think there's anything to be worried about. I traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um, what do you mean? Wait, you haven't heard. I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a relief to hear. Uh, she doesn't appear to be acting. So, it seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. Interesting. Back already? Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder if sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guests seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape and wherever we go all we see is people enjoying themselves definitely not a good sign i agree another unusual thing is that the oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape however i walked around the hotel but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Oak family is that Sunday guy, right? We shouldn't linger here too long. Let's go back to the Express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC, bro? If you run away now, Everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See, the IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, 
She'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality, a secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill, if you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. Fair enough. How do we get into the VIP lounge? This is where my street smarts come into play. Sound lingers. You can actually book a stay on credit and the interest. You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I assist you? We're the nameless from the Astro Express. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Now, we've been waiting here forever without any food or water. What the fork, man? What Is this how family treats its guests? <clears throat> Is this your idea of street sports? Yes, shut up, Daniel. Shut up, shut up, Daniel. <laughs> it's called... Standing up, America. <laughs> I fucking love Boot Hill. <laughs> love this character. For the That's right. Just fucking go at him. Just be cowboy about it. Contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there. That's right. <laughs> See, just like that. Just, uh, just don't call yourself nameless. I hope he time. joins the Astral Express. This far something else. Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Please let me fight something with Ab. Uh, one peach soul glad. Shaken. Shaken, not sturdy. Gentlemen. Mm. Hey, I have an order for a bottle of this Donna's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Has Donna's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. Uh, I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? <laughs> Then what should we do now? No, oh, no need to rush. But let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and he hasn't come yet. Now, let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh. Well, give me a glass of Heenum Valley 40 years. I'll have it neat. No ice. I'll have a need. No eyes. I <laughs> fucking love it. It's wow. great. That's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. That doesn't necessarily mean true. The most expensive. Take it not just not from me, but for just from people who I know who are actually into like alcoholics. Just because it's the most expensive does not actually always make it the best when it comes, especially when it comes to alcohol. It's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. Hmm, just one minute. Ah, this flavor. Dynamite barbecue. You were rocket fuel. <laughs> Ooh, really hits the spot. Truly the finest sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Like really good, like like the expensive beer before, and I tasted the paint thinner. Yeah, like really good stuff. You don't you don't taste it. That's and that's what makes it actually like really fucking good. <laughs> Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Uh, 
Is that really something that humans enjoy? <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions, let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is... I'm gonna laugh when he finds out that she's not even here anymore, if she did actually leave. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about. Regarding Acheron, as you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. Who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the rainbow set lets their luck's arrow do all the beating? Talking. Do all the talking. <laughs> I love this two various. So what's funny is like we know we know the origin of Lan of the Hunt, right? Like he was a Ziensho citizen. He was a person, right? Uh, who basically, you know, was fucking tired of the abundance. I'm I'm super super paraphrasing, and then stood up and became you know an Aeon and all this other stuff, right? But then you have these people out here who are like the Wild West Rangers of the Hunt, who are just like the Hunt. I like that. I'm gonna follow that path and I'm gonna go fight. Like, I don't know. You have this, this, you have this like super thousand year old culture of people who follow the hunt to destroy the abundance. And then you have cowboys. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure not all, all galaxy rangers are like, are like boot hill, but it's just freaking, it's fudge and hilarious to imagine. Well, you know what I mean. Even though the galaxy rangers have been out of sight for years. We've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. Yeah, yeah, different sects of different religions. Exactly this is just a very extreme one. And when to <laughs> Not strike the extreme without world, mercy. But yeah. And do you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a Galaxy Ranger? How do you know she's impersonating a Galaxy Ranger? How do you know she didn't actually make the pledge, even if she is an emanator of nihility? Mm. I'm not entirely sure. But I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a Galaxy Ranger, or... I mean, the hunt is akin to death. To lure us out for some reason. Right? Maybe she out. wants to use the hunt to destroy nihility? Anyway... What worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual. Unless the invitations weren't sent by them. Uh, if that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival. Despite the chaos. Uh -huh. Maybe. She pay the harmony pulling the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. But eons don't. Yeah. They stick to their determined path and never turn back, even if they reach a dead end. Yeah, true. Eons are like they 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 are the path. They are they go and they are they yeah. It's interesting. That's interesting. You mm -hmm. think Shipe's will is behind all this? I definitely do. I definitely do. I definitely feel like Harmony, the the Harmony is allowing all of this to happen for a reason, right? If if the Dream Maker, who has the power of the Harmony behind them, is using the Stellaron to do all this stuff, 
and it's caused so much problem. It's kind of been like a boiling pot over this time, and it's finally reached uh, an apex. It definitely would stand to reason that Z Zipe themselves would also be involved in this. It may not necessarily be Shipe. There's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh, so you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because they're absolutely right leader is gone exactly i believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right it's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities even with limited insight and judgment i don't know what you've been through but i agree that people must take responsibility Facts. for Facts. Their choices. preach Preach, Boo Hill. No Preach. Can do it for him. Facts. Biggest, biggest facts. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter and figure out her true intentions. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the memo keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Always. He's a cowboy. Well. Going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. And by the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests? What's your plan? <laughs> Hostage. It's simple. We just yep. grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips with the family. I knew it. Maybe we can even <laughs> take their identities. No need for that. We'll return to the Express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? Huh? As Donna's White Oak? But didn't you just say? Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of As Donna's White Oak just a moment ago. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. Oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. Well, fork me. It says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. Huh? No mistake, that's her message to you. She knew the hotel wasn't safe, so she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but now it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. I would like to say that even though, like, I know I get irritated sometimes when we do stuff that's not, like, the main story. This is not one of those sections, but that, um... So I told them to wait in the parlor car. Um, but the, uh, like the sparkle section where we're running around talking to people, like I get that that was a little bit of stuff we had to do, um, and everything, but it was paced okay. And like so far the pacing of this is actually feels pretty good. Like it feels, it feels a lot better than certain other sections. I want to point that out. Oh, just in time. Two, two guests. guests. Acheron. Yeah, her two. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. At some point, Pom Pom's gonna lose his shit and just start just beating people up. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Given the chaotic situation, they don't know about that. Me, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. You are the memo keeper. Pleased to meet you, Don Hung. I've seen you and others' memories. 
And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's White Oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, you memo keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. Bet Akron is here too. He said two guests. Akron was told to leave. She's still precisely here. Precisely what I intend to do. But before that, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Black Swan, and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo key. Oh my god. <laughs> as for Acheron's story, I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Greetings. I'm Acheron. Damn. <laughs> what? You Garden of Recollection shirtbag! You betrayed me! I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. To be honest, it was more like stalking than helping. And the process was far from unnoticed. But we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals. Namely, all of you. Trustworthy? <laughs> Son of a nice lady. You think I'm dumb or something? How about this? I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Then, we can talk about trust. It doesn't have to be like that. I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. My cover hadn't been blown. We Three might have had a nine revolver. Time. Yes, he's a cowboy. He's right when he says fucking classic. Okay, just saying. <laughs> revolver. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. Maybe it was a mistranslation in the thing. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. The revolver part is the classic bit of it. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna go with that part. No other options. What do you mean? Then again, back in the day, they might not have had a higher caliber revolver. It might have been a small caliber revolver. Yeah, it's whatever. This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. What? <sighs> I feel like I missed something here. Maybe I'm misunderstanding my... my... why... Uh, maybe we're misunderstanding... what I call it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, this is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, the 9mm revolver is like the, is actually the like classic gun you would often see in old like westerns. I'm like looking it up real quick because I'm actually curious. So when he says classic, he really does mean it. Like I'm not really sure what you're getting at, Ken. I'm not. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I have no idea what you're what you're exclamating this. To be honest with you, I'm gonna answer all your questions, but I can't answer any of your questions, bitch. What? Yeah, no. She's she's yeah. Okay. Well, it's been a classic, and I actually have some stopping power considering all the magic cybernetics and shit. Whatever. Um, whatever, dude. What? Like whatever, man. Like. It, it wouldn't, but it wouldn't be the classic for like, yeah, just, uh, you know what? I'm going to move on because I really don't, I just don't want to get into it. I don't care enough to get into it. Whatever your problems are, take them somewhere else. As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Hung. Please rest assured, 
Your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. So she did start answering questions. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. Stop with the hand on, on the chest motion. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens. A sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods. Shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So... How long has this rain been going on for? I used to believe just like you, that it would eventually stop years and decades past. And in the end, such hope faded away before the rain did. Looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all. Those gauge remain fixed in the distance, and this the finders of the black rain countless shadowy hands merge from the sea. Shot of an ethereal mist reaching out towards the sky one by one. Let me share a story with you. Mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates Countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Like those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters. The obsessions of the path striders. They emerge from the depths of IX, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they were once my dear companions. A group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. A crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zulo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. Ooh, so a price one of uh, the destruction so emanators. Hefty that only those who were there still remember. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So, someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of nihility. As for me, I've suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? 
Will some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless? How very unnihilistic of him. I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question, and a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. Interesting. Switching to Robin's POV. Sorry, I was sorry if I was a golden hour. Damn, this when I appeared as a child, my speech, mindset, and soul reflected immaturity and innocence. I don't get to fight. As I grew now. into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shipe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade, promoting the path of the harmony to the best of my ability. However, I made a mistake yesterday. While I was preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor. Out of uh, laziness, I lied and claimed that everything was ready. <laughs> Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worry that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. They, they're... So, I confess to you now to seek atonement for my sins. So... At least this version of the Harmony, at least this way, this these group of people who follow the Harmony, they're basically the Catholic Church. They literally have confessionals. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I, there was a lot of iconography for that. There was a lot of an, an implication, but that's that's interesting. Do you sincerely repent and vow to change your ways? <sighs> yes. Interesting. Have you examined your soul and confessed all your sins? He was literally a priest listening to confessions. Oh. Yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family, and you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Oh, praise she may. And thank you, esteemed advocate. It's a good picture of Sunday. I like it. Um, how am I liking the story so far? A lot. It's, this, is, this is really good. 2.2 .2 is very good so far. Next, please step forward. I, I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Rest assured, I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, 
Absolution will be granted. Oh, oh, great. You know, I... I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to get a ticket. My house, my land, and... My two children. My two children. What? Motherfucker. <laughs> no, I don't forgive you. No, no forgiveness. No forgiveness for you, buddy. None. None whatsoever. This is why I could never be a priest. No fucking forgiveness. No forg I sold my children. No. No forgiveness. It's bad. Wow. <laughs> I see. Please, go on. My children were starving. Yeah. And I hoped they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If... If I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of that situation and give them the life they deserve. I'll be right back. One second. All right, I'm back. All right, I'm back. Um, uh, my children were starving, and I hoped they have a chance to survival if they become if they become slaves here. If uh, if I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of the situation and give them the life they deserve. Yeah, buddy, that's not gonna work out the way. You but the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. All my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll work my heart. Redeem your children. Redeem yourself, buddy. I'll make them part of the family. Praise. Praise the harmony. Next. Please, step forward. Hey! Long time no see, Mr. Sunday. The most esteemed individual in Pentacony, and the next leader of the Oak family, right? I have sought their presence with us. Let us proceed. Sure. Let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned. Please forgive me. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast. And a bottle of soul glad. So something I I don't talk about very often um, is religion on here. Like we talk about it sometimes in at the abstract and like the funnies and things. Always like I don't really talk about religion very much. Um, and it's only and there's and there's something I've uh, uh, I only realized kind of like later afterwards. Uh, in life now is that I was raised pretty much uh, very Catholic actually and uh, very uh, uh, up to a point because then my mom sort of changed her viewpoint and so a lot of our life changed in how we viewed things and stuff along those lines well anyways so confessing to a priest and all that other stuff is because uh, uh, you need a priest to be able to talk to God for you but well, you know you, you know you know right so this though is fucking hilarious this part here is hilarious because you would have to deal with this shit of someone being like yeah I I wasted half a pizza and a bottle of soul glad you know uh, I f forgive me God you know like it's just uh, <laughs> that's it nothing more can we wrap this up like the disrespect from this guy's side right from the, the from the guy having confessing these and not it, they're still sins right sure whatever if you consider them sins that are but having to deal with all that would just be like a fucking mind-numbing thing i can't imagine that because on some level maybe the guy is actually not that bad of a person maybe these genuinely are his worst his worst things that he feels that he has done right which in that case Cool, but at the same time, like, dude, God forgives you. Move on. <laughs> Do you seek to 
to atone for your sins through good deeds. With that said, I I am not like I am I'm far closer to being like more agnostic than I am actually being like Catholic. Um, I'm probably more closer to like Christian in terms of faith and all that other stuff, or non-Catholic Christian. Like this thing. My sins? Wow, I'm starting to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge Why the me. fuck are you here confessing your sin? Like, what? You think nobody knows what your precious family has done? About the watchmaker? Huh? <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Featherbrain. Those dreams. Featherbrain, okay, look, all right, all right, Don't all right. There are we. There are way too many insults being thrown at Sunday now, okay? Chicken Wing Boy, Mr. 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 Wing, Mr. Feathered, fucking Feather Brain. I'm done. I'm done with these people. Stop stop insulting my man Sunday, okay? Now that I don't believe he's the bad guy, or if he is still the bad guy, it's probably justified. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but stop it. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? Your power. What makes you think you can sit there all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Why the hell are you even here then? If you don't, if you're just here to pay the lip service, and then you're gonna start causing problems and start talking shit when you go to do that because you ain't got time for it, but you still want to pay the lip service, bro. Well, I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Like, this is the kind of attitude you'd expect from someone who was raised in it, but then is like, I don't believe in God, so fuck you, and blah, 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 and all the atrocities you committed. And it's just generally disrespectful and stupid. Why the fuck are you even here? Oh, revered triple-faced soul. Like, you don't have to be Believe it or not, you don't have to be... Uh, religious to have good manners and proper respect. I'm just saying. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak when they will pay any price to survive? Who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? Mm -hmm. If the strong defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise, then who? Who is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world? Oh, that's a uh, that's I'm not I can't get into that one right now. Good question though, Sunday. Good question. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, that's a that 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 one that's one can of worms. Yeah, that is. Cannot get into that one right now, buddy. Brother, are you all right? I'm. Fine. I've been working long hours, and I just made a trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. So, I'm a bit out of sorts. But it'll all be over before we know it. You've been working non-stop on the Charmony Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> No need to worry about troubling anyone. The Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. But now that we know the truth, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand. Hmm. Sorry, I've got like a thing like two. I'm trying to get it out, so I was doing it a minute ago. Even like if the negotiation does not go smoothly, I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chordmaster, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive, and the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. You know, since arriving in Penacone, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. I'm curious to say, accredited. 
Is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is impotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've heard that statement before. The Dream Master rarely grants an audience, even for us. But, given the urgency of the situation, he's agreed to meet us in person. <laughs> Perhaps he'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. Indeed. Let us hope so. It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. I apologize for any inconvenience caused by the urgency. Don't worry. I'll be waiting here. Looks like someone needs help. Let's go check it out. Mr. Sunday. Hey there! Okay, see the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my Soul Glad bottle. If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? <laughs> the, the moon? You mean the Grand Theater? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at me. I've been away from home for two long i must be missing that moon <laughs> but it's no big deal the grand theater here looks much better than the moon back home it's just magnificent they told me not to sell everything i had just to come to pentaconi how short-sighted selling everything you had why would you go to such lengths why? Can't you see? Life back home is better to be here at Pinnacone. No pain, no worries about tomorrow, just sweet dreams. You can do whatever you want. That's what I call living. <laughs> yeah, now this is the life. Is this truly living? <laughs> huh? What did you say, young lady? <laughs> Oh, it's nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idean Park over there, so you can continue enjoying your sweet dream? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Wow, no wonder you are the leader of the sweet, sweet dream. dream. You're, You're totally, totally a lifesaver, man. <sighs> Mr. Sunday, and uh, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? Because reality sucks. The man we ran into, he doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only usually have a planet of people on happy drugs. I suppose you have a point. But in my opinion, that's how most people live their lives. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living, but that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions yep. called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power, and those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, value doesn't come out of thin air, and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, people have to take from others. So, 
the weak get exploited and oppressed. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. But, ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value. And even the weak believe in it. Survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream and penetrate to of the world from that reality and find solace. No tragedies exist here, only happiness, although in its nascent form. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? <sighs> Perhaps that man is just an exception. Let's not jump to conclusions. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Reef. Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. Sunday test? No. Damn. Put Sunday on the party too. Let me test Sunday. Don't hit Robin. Robin died today. Glad to meet you again, Robin. <laughs> How are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. Again? Uh, it's going smoothly. Are you, are you not going to point that out? Thanks okay. for making the trip to join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever... Would it get boring, too? <sighs> nah, not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But... You know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I, I mean, I'm not one of those long living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure. Bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the Did world. Did you guys not understand that the dream was literally escapism to the extreme? <laughs> I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin. I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. Robin definitely does not understand and accept it. There's no. The guest does. Like, the guest understands. Robin clearly is like, wait a minute. She had a valid point. I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life, but in reality... Oh yeah, no, the guest clearly understood. Reality and seeking solace in this sweet but, dream. But like what Sunday's saying here, she but like, yeah. This sanctuary, everything will be lost. Yep, what you're trying to say is she thinks she's in control of her life, but in reality she's just escaping from reality. But in reality she's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. When she steps into the sanctuary, everything will be lost. That is, is basically life in a nutshell. It's about appreciating. Uh, it's also this is this is a really interesting story concept because it goes against what the nihility thing too. Because like the nihility really is like I'm glad they brought nihility into the story because if everything is going to end, no matter what, no matter what you do, everything you do will be eroded away. You will not be remembered. It will not matter. A thousand years from now, it's not going to matter. 10,000 years is not going to matter because eventually everything will cease to exist. If you accept that, then you are you are on the path of nihility. You you that is what you're on, right? But if you understand 
that that end also doesn't matter, right? The ending also doesn't matter. It's about the journey, the trailblaze, right? It's the it's the good moments you have up until it ends that matter, that make life worth going. Then you're good. Having escapes here and there, that's a good, that's healthy. Living in the escape is not. That is called delusions. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't she? Tend to instantly brush the word nihilism with nothing matters ever. That's not, yeah. However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. No, and the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting it's called shifting? I don't watch TikTok, so I don't. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. We're we're moving on from this topic. I don't want, I do not want to know. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking. Isn't it? Oh, Robin. Can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. Now, with little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations. Especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said, with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Penacony? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. How heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. And they have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, most advanced life support services in the cosmos and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room, my true appearance. No. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So, you'll be living forever in this dreamscape, right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart, and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise and I'll treasure every moment I spend here <laughs> now I envy those everlasting things <laughs> oh man's story it's so tragic fortunately this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life that's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists However, even the sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain in reality. Of course not. There will be a way out. Panacone is already on the right track. Okay, all right. I'm starting to get the vibes here that Sunday is a problem. Also, 
that's a good thing that it doesn't really pain because without this is why I think this is again I go back to Final Fantasy XIV. I think it had the best story about why. why I think it had one of the best like explanations for like life and stuff and and and, and everything along those lines. Um, why does life go on? Like life, pain and life is suffering. Like life is suffering. You have to suffer in order to appreciate like everything like if you don't if you don't have hardship then you don't appreciate anything and it shows when people don't have hardship they either can't relate to others who do go through hardship and find it difficult to make connections and to sympathize because for some reason we as humans only only understanding through um joyful things oftentimes does not create as strong a bond as like you know suffering through something because then you can't appreciate the good things and the suffering and when you do suffer it has either more impact or less impact based on like like how good you have it I guess you could say right and then there'll be others who will look at that and be like either envious or, or it'll it'll disconnect you from them um, it's very well unharmonious actually Hey, look, it's the other Robin. Fucking Sparkle. <laughs> look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Wait, is that me? There's a trend in my country where young people throw large rocks off bridges onto traffic because they don't understand that it could hurt, could hurt someone. How do you not, one, how do you not understand that? That is... That is, that is insane. That is, that is insane. I don't, I don't, I, I, that, that is insane. That is absolutely crazy, Lagarde. That is, that's so, cr that's fucking crazy. I don't know what country you're in. That's crazy. Where's my... Oh my fucking this. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you meant. Ignore Ken. He's being he's being weird today. I don't know his I don't know what his problem is. This is zero adver adversity in our society, I guess. That's crazy. A surprise to see you again. Show yourself. Your trick won't work on us. I mean, I'm literally standing right I've here. I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation too. That must be you, right? Did you enjoy yourself? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's, that's, I'm gonna... Lagarde, that's that's crazy. I'm gonna try to ignore that now and go back to the story. Please don't take it personal, because I don't want... I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to think about that. That's fucking terrible. Um, I can't tell who's hotter, Sparkle or Robin. That's what I'm, that's where my brain's gonna go right now. I need my, I need escapism from the reality that that is right now. I need to be in a sweet dream, please. That is Honkai Star Rail. Oof. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless. Oh, how disheartening! I've done so much for the family. You should be thanking me. Because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Panacone would still be in shambles. Don't you think? That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family, and it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. I see. Well, Robin, she is a little curvier, and I like that. Fair enough. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? 
Yeah, Robin is, yeah, Robin's a little bit too much of a goody two-shoes. I don't care uh, on some what you're thinking, chicken wing boy. But I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this I mean, at, at this point, it's not just Sparkle. Everybody has called him Chicken Wing Boy, Mr. Wing, and Feather Feather Brain, okay? It's not even just Sparkle, okay? <laughs> not that I really fucking care because it's hilarious to me at this point, but like, it's, it's, it's like consistent. Stop it. <laughs> What's the rash, Chicken Wing Boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Mast Fool. Leave now, or the family. Sure, but Sparkle delivers it with a bit more bite. And you want to know why Sparkle gets under? It's because Sparkle knows it gets under his skin, and that is like, <laughs> that is like the biggest. That is the problem. If you let it, if you let it get to your skin, then they won't stop. Take it from someone who has experienced this shit. Just don't fucking worry about it. She is one hell of a troll. Yeah. That's cool. Leave now, or the family won't tell her you. All right, all right, I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Did Robin actually just scare off Sparkle? Interesting. Maybe she's not so goody after all. Okay. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? <sighs> well, I've done my part, and now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here. The last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show. And it'll be thrilling. Bang! I heard a raven calling in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Sunday is the Dream Master. All right, side profile. No, my uh, when I when I picked up my mouse earlier because my thing wasn't working, I I hit my um, um like the API, so I was like, what the hell? It was going really slow. Okay. By the way, though she does have a great side profile. I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams. It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality or bring you happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. True. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. I mean, that's a little bit different. The thing is, the thing with this kind of situation, it's all, it's literally a case by case basis. You cannot you will never find a uniform answer for everybody. Humans don't true, work like that. Even without Penacony, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he's receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. I mean. She has a point on that. Maybe he could have gone to the Intelligentsia Guild to go get help that way. But he chose to come here to Penny Coney. And Penny Coney provided the, what he asked for. You as a person, Robin, and Sunday as a person, have no right to tell him that was a wrong choice or a bad choice. Because it is his life and this is where he decided to go. So, it is what it is. Right? He had another option. He went here. 
And here's the thing. Yeah, depending on how cute the radiation was, he may not have there may they may not have been able to do anything. So instead of living and this is all this all come this is from me who's you know worked in medical. This all comes down to the individual. This this is why I just made the statement of you will never find a solution for a blanket everybody. It comes down to the individual. The solution he decided for his situation was that he would rather be put into that state and put in the dream and live as long as he can that way. Cool. That's his choice. He's living his best life. Good for him. You can feel what you want about that, but that's that's his choice. Right? And that's okay. The lady over there who was dealing with that is also it's it's her choice. She can deal with that. The problem with the, the Pentacony in general is it does seem to uh, because of the Stellaron feed off of it. It it makes it worse, right? It makes them dependent on it, like a drug, right? And that is where you becomes a problem, is because you start to ignore the reality. Right? It's like the lady said, like the one lady said, right? She was like, oh yeah, no, real life sucks, so I'm never leaving, right? That's a problem, right? The the the, the guy we met before that, the drunkard, right? That's also a problem. He's ignoring reality. But then again, I would also say it is not the responsibility of uh, others to make the choice for them, Right? It's not the responsibility of of others to make the choice for them. They have to make a choice. You can provide a service like Pentacony and get lost in the dream. Um, but the problem is this is the insidious nature underneath all of that. It's a very nuanced, it's a very, very nuanced thing. Starvale is doing a really good job, of, at least with Pentacony. And I think they did a little bit with Zion Show as well. Uh, though that was a little bit more straightforward. They're doing a really good job in Pentacony of kind of bringing in the nuance of, you know, choice, life and all that and even religion is Pentacony granting these people a future or is it taking it away from them it entirely depends on the individual it's entirely the individual robin it is is in, kind of like the guy was saying to sunday before right what gives you the right to make that choice now in this specific scenario, a Stellaron is always bad. Like this is not a good thing. It's feeding off of this and it's 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 furthering people's um, habits of bad habits and unhealthy behavior, right? You know, having an occasional drink here and there or you know, uh, going out to a bar every few you know, every so often, you know, to relax, detox, you know, smoking cigarettes you know having some weed whatever you're doing to sort of chill and like detox from the reality of the world that's fine it's when it becomes destructive to your life in general to your general health to your friends your family etc is when it starts to become a problem and that's clearly what's happening here with the yeah or gaming uh clearly what's happening here with the robin like not the robin but the the stellaron situation well don't forget this not everyone really has a future. Yeah, something to be said for that. Sunday here sounding, uh... The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds because they've never witnessed... Yeah, Sunday has reached a state where he believes he knows better than everybody. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah, we took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers, and later, when I decided to leave Penacony, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. Because it hit the window? Oh god. <laughs> That's terrible! surmised as much I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason birds do that all the time yeah unfortunately birds do it all the time they wanted to come home despite that unfortunate outcome I still believe it was the right decision birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages they belong in the sky even if they can't fly. I'm okay Rev but thank you but here's the thing if there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? 
No, early, I, like I was talking about it earlier, I actually haven't touched uh, punished, a PGR in like a month. <laughs> like after after that that one banner ended, and then like the the big booba green girl came out, I kind of I kind of played a little bit, but I I haven't touched it in a month. I just don't have the time to play another game. Are you implying that the same goes for humans too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. You have us, Chris. Whenever you come back, it'll will be easy for you from there. Yeah. I did get all the stuff like that was available at the time, like the extra SSR or the extra pulls and all that stuff. So, so. That's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right. To I mean, that goes the back to the survival of the fittest thing, because on some level. On some level, depending on how you view powerful, uh, the right to determine the future is... <laughs> you have the choice. You have the option. You can make a difference. It goes back to the individual. And Man, this is really getting into a lot of shit. I'm not going to lie. This is, this, this is some shit right now. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Oh. Another name for the future is self-value. He's he's being dangerously close to Might Makes Right. I mean, he he's not even dangerously close. He's right there. He's literally been talking about it this entire time. He is all about he's talking about survival of the fittest. And he's and he's and he's become a little bit self-righteous in the fact that he believes that he has to be the one to do this. Like he nobody else is listening because we're having all these problems still, and he's constantly surrounded by these people um uh basically self-destructing by uh by all of this right it just <sighs> i knew sunday was the bad guy by the way i called it i fucking called it i knew it i called it while this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime yep some are born weak and vulnerable some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. Well, that's why we band together, to help each other and lift each other up. And we don't always do that. And we should. We don't always do that. That's why we should care for the weak. And support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the odes of harmony have always taught us. But you can't go too far. You can't live someone's else li someone else's life for them. And you can't control their minds. While the harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness. But it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. It's an interesting it's an interesting thought, right? It's like the north like so the average person like the uh, on on general the average person all they really care about is where like is their survival is like most people only really care about like you know am i going to get a meal am i going to eat something and then if that's provided for well where am i going to do this and what am i going to do this it's a yeah it's a pyramid of needs right with the first one being you know sustenance water food things along those lines right and then you go you go from there and it's just, yeah, it's just life. Yeah, everything else pretty much optional. Yeah. yeah. 
And you'd be willing, and the thing is, people are willing to give up a lot for food, you know, sustenance, you know, physiological, and security. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? Nanook the destruction. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, here's the thing. Like, this goes also into, like, this goes into that, that faith bit, right? And, or not belief. And this is why sometimes people have a disconnect between the two, right? It's because if you, if you believe in a greater power, if you believe that there is a plan that despite all of this, it gives you, it can give you a strength to get through the hard days. It is your version of mm, escapism. No, I use that word very, very lightly because I know people who are like really religious would, would consider that like, like it's not escapism because it's real and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is everybody needs something to give them hope, right? And whatever you find, whatever you find for that, that is, that is your, that is your thing. But it sounds to me like Sunday is like they're all dumb. They don't know what they want, kind of thing. Like they, like this survival, this thing, is not enough. And I, I have, I have the answer. Basically, it's ba I'm really boiling it down, but that's really what it feels. A purpose or responsibility, something. Yes, exactly. Something to move forward. This is again, if you've never played the Final Fantasy XIV main story, you should. It's really good. It's a really good story about the entire story is basically about that. It's really good. People often forget up to that. the end of. And when the first know. bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. But that's not that's not living. That's stagnation, right? That's not that's not existent. If anything, that's kind of nihil that's also kind of nihility, right? Like that's that's it's kind of also nihilism, right? If we just stop, if everything just stops, then we're not living, and it's end. We've come to an end. So. If anything, if anything, it's less destruction at this point being a problem. Stellaron and destruction being a problem, and more, uh, uh, more in that direction. Are you reading, sister? Maybe that's why. What are you reading? Now Acheron is here. Mister Gopher Wood gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a chord master, I'd like to summon Dominicus. The harmonious choir. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. Oh, I am. I'm finishing this today. Especially, yeah, that's true. If we keep going on tangents, though, I will definitely not be able to probably finish today. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Then I would summon the harmonious choir, too. Don't you have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that it includes your wish and everyone else's. Oh, I like Sunday's character so much because he's a character who had, he's a guy who like, he grew up with dreams. He dreamed, he hoped for a bright future of peace and love and everybody being together and everybody being fantastic. And when it all kind of crashed, like kind of is crashing down around him as he realizes like everybody is just escaping it and not really believing it. And he keeps seeing this shit and all this other stuff. He's like, fine, I'll fucking, I'll figure it out. I'll come up with the grandest plan to instill peace in everything. Hold on. Um, what was I doing? Yeah. So what I was saying is like I I I like I like I like this character. <laughs> He's like I will impose my will. I'm so here's the thing. When I saw the initial trailer for the boss, like if he's not the boss, I will be shocked. Because when I saw the initial trailer for the boss and they got this like thing around his back, I was like that looks almost exactly like Sunday's Sunday's Halo. So, oh, did Microsoft call you about your virus? Yeah. Both our wishes come true through the power of the harmonious choir. It's a deal then. Yeah, it's a deal. So like I was wrong about him being the beast and it actually killing Galagar and all this other stuff, which is fine, but I still was sus of him and now I know why. He is he is still the problem. Especially after I saw the trailer. Hmm. And the fact that Sunday is not in the trailer anywhere. 
Maybe. Not even in voice lines. You'll have to become a star first. <laughs>